Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got a three versus three for you today. This one is going to be on Blasted Tundra, which is a modification of Blasted Rock. And this is a three versus three version instead of, I believe the original is two versus two with slots here and here, if I'm not totally mistaken. Before we jump into this game, I wanted to talk to you guys for just a second about replays. Yes, I always say that I need replays, but I'm telling you I am dragging the bottom of the barrel on replays. I've had a few sent to me recently, and I just have not gotten good ones to cast. I don't know what it's been recently, but it seems like the good games are ruined by rage quitters and desyncs and that kind of thing. And then all of the games that are happening are just kind of following the same basic pattern with nothing out of the ordinary, nothing interesting, nothing really worth casting. I'm trying to solve that problem with introducing the new maps because that both gets everybody playing new things, which livens up the lobby, and it breaks the meta of the game. Because when you play the same maps over and over and over again, like you see on Wonder, on Canis, on Settings, that kind of thing, it ends up being really super boring because everybody does the same thing all the time and you rarely, rarely see special stuff. So I'm going to cast this map. It's one that we haven't really seen before. I've never even played on it. And it's an average game. I'm going to cast it. We're going to have some fun with it. And hopefully we can get a little bit of entertainment. But I need you guys to send me any replays that you see that are awesome, that have unusual things happening. Even fail casts. I am up for doing some more strategic face palms. Hell, I know some people would love that. So if you have just the stupidest game that you're okay with us just dissecting and laughing hysterically at, then send it over. Anything like that. I just need some replays to draw some from. So I'm going to leave that aside. Let's go ahead and dive into this game and we will see what happens. And after we get done here, after you get back to your lives and gaming and that kind of thing, just make sure to send those replays. Just attach the file to the email address in the description and I will take a look at it. All right, let's go ahead and introduce the players here. This is a north versus south, if I'm not totally mistaken. Yes, it is. Three in the bottom, three in the top. And these are some pretty high-level players. We've got Nequilich taking Seraphim, the infamous Chosen taking his traditional Aeon, and Ciro taking Cybern. That is 15 to 1800 and then actually that's exactly the same this is a perfectly balanced match 15 17 and 18 for both teams we've got Luker he is taking Aeon we've got UEF for super and last but certainly not least Shadow Israel taking UEF in the red color and this map is going to be a little bit difficult to see on because it is snowy but you can see we do have ice chunks there's a little bit of reclaim laying around not many mass extractors. You're going to have to expand and fight over the ones that you want to keep. Most of them are out in the middle, out and about where they are easily picked off. And that's a nice little clump of, looks like T2 Rex, maybe? Yes. T2 Rex out there in the middle. Looks like a fairly well-balanced map, so hopefully we can have a good time with this. All right, right off the bat, we can see normal land builds going down. We've got Nequilich planning out four land factories adjacent to that mass extractor, which if I was him, I would upgrade first so that I can get that boosted adjacency bonus. And then on the north side, Chosen's going for a heavy air build. That's going to be three air factories with an absurd amount of power to supply all of that. We've got an air factory going down for Ciro as well. Second land already kicking off. Looks like Chosen's going to be building land out on the front. On the south side, uh, that is a little bit of aggression there. A patrol order for that uh, Mantis. I don't think I've ever seen a Mantis put out on front on a patrol order before. That is a new one to me, but there is a striker coming in, so unless he takes manual control of that, that mantis will lose to the striker. Nice little chunk of mass there. We've got four land factories going down for Israel, which is actually an identical build. This looks exactly the same as that does, <laughs> minus the air factory that's going down there. So it looks like about a mirror on that one. A single air factory going down for Super, who is going versus Chosen in the middle. And then for Luker, it looks like we've got two land. We're going third air. And he does have a few combat units out. I think actually the most from anyone. The south is going early aggression. 
we're gonna see a lot of units pouring out at least until this comes online I would anticipate an early T2 from Nequilich because that's about the only thing that's going to help him versus the Auroras. You got to get those Ilshivas on the field so that they can match ranges with the Auroras. Otherwise, all of your Thams are going to get absolutely obliterated by the Aeon forces. Another helpful thing would be to run to the front with a gun commander. If you can get that online, you can knock out the Auroras very, very easily while tanking damage with your ACU. That saves your forces. You don't have to move to T2. You can just spam the ever-living hell out of T1 and then invade their personal space. Zero trying to move forward a little bit with a few Mantis, but it looks like we have a roughly even number of tanks out here, which means that is not going to be too terribly successful. Two additional land factories going down on the front. ACU sitting in a big pile of reclaim, which hopefully he can suck up. He's gonna go ahead and abandon that though. This is what they're vying for. Um, we've got a Hydro and two Mass Extractors within this enclosed area. If you can get a couple of combat units and an Engineer in there and wall it off, that's a nice nice little eco boost for your side. <clears throat> and a little voice break in there to break up the monotony. This is looking like a bit of an ECU push for Nequilich, although I would really highly recommend not to get too close with that unupgraded commander because Auroras can obliterate you. It is incredibly frustrating to get inside range of those Auroras and just watch the health flee away from the little bar next to your ACU. And you really can't do anything to get away from it because there is no water. So you basically have to either hide behind a rock or bring your units up to defend your commander. Kind of frustrating. Several air factories going down here, it looks like. Is that... Nope, those are land. Sorry, my bad. Several more land factories. That's going to make a total of eight for Luker. So, let's see, is he still on T1? Yes, he is, but he's only building from four factories. Nice little T1 bomber up there at the top, too. We've got one from Luger and one from Super, which is actually going to work very, very well versus Chosen since he's Aeon. We all know that measly little HP number on the Aeon tank simply cannot stand up to T1 bomber, so that is a tool of great usefulness versus an Aeon player. We need to see a little bit more of a push from Chosen, I think. He's actually fielding units to the right and not too much in the middle, which is kind of odd. There's enough reclaim in the middle, I think, to merit going in there full force, at least at the beginning. I don't know if I would bother building... I, I probably wouldn't bother building the Hydro, and I don't know if I would bother building the Nexus, because with this close of proximity... That's a serious gamble, but I definitely wouldn't just abandon it. That seems like a very, very odd choice, and Chosen is, at the moment, sitting at the bottom of the score stack. Highly unusual place for him to be. I'm not sure what all is going on there. The south side looks like it's progressing very, very well. Huge, massive T1 spam coming in from Shadow. He is only on 19 mass income, but he is reclaiming quite heavily, already up to 2,200 reclaim, barely, barely balancing his power on that, getting so many units online so quickly. That is awesome. And I spy, ah, that is a jester. Hello, little friend. Unfortunately, there's two interceptors heading down to take him out. No accompanying air for defense, but he is going to nab that expansion here and a mass extractor. Not really worth losing a jester over, I don't think but highly entertaining nonetheless. We all love a good jest now and again. Super camping out directly in the center with his ACU. Of course, he's gonna be able to hold off most of those tanks as long as he doesn't shed too much health while they're kiting him. On the north side, looks like Nekulich is giving up ground. No upgrade as of yet, nothing. Ah, there we go, gun upgrade going down on the commander. That is exactly what we're looking for. That will allow him to regain some ground chosen popping up on the scoreboard he's up to 23 yes 23 mass income super sitting on 39 so winner of the eco game goes to white chosen looks like he is around 24 sitting on 4700 reclaim so double the reclaim half the income at this point in the game that is actually not too shabby it may be the case, yes, we have four T2 mass extractors online. Looks like White is playing for the long game. 
and Chosen is scaling up his land production, but he's still fielding units to the left and only getting enough in the middle to prevent Super from pushing through the center gap. So this is very odd play in my opinion. If he knows that Nekulich is getting the gun upgrade, then he should know that he can kind of hold off a little bit, but he seems to be just kind of expending units to one side or the other without really gaining any superior footing on his own end. Very, very strange. Nekulich is just about done with that gun upgrade, and once he gets there, he should be able to move in and pretty much wipe out that entire force. Although Luker does have... He does have both guns, so he has the damage and he has a little bit of extra range. With these tanks into a company that force in the commander, I think he'll be fine though. Let's take a check on Chosen's commander before that combat starts happening. He has the radar and T2, so the exact opposite of what Luker went for. That allows you to build T2 point defense with impunity, never worrying about radar coverage because Omni is built into your ACU with quite the substantial little radius. Let's go ahead and show that off here so everybody can see. You have Omni inside that radius. Nothing can hide from you. Incredibly helpful versus a Cybern player because if you can concentrate your combat forces directly around your ACU, stealth is worthless. Nice. Nice little advantage there. We do have a stealth unit online for Ciro, who is unfortunately letting a small task force slip by him on the outside edge. Looks like Luker and Nekulich would like to hell with the unit combat. Let's just collide with our commanders. And in the center, Chosen has lost that point event to a couple of overcharges, and he is rebuilding it. Nope, to... T1 mobile artillery. Not sure why he's trying to rebuild it when the artillery is right there. T1 bombers coming in. Those air factories finally going to work. There's two of them online with some fairly heavy assistance on one. But here comes five T1 bombers for Super. He could kill every single one of those tanks if he control or if he shift G commands to spread the attack out. But nope, looks like all the bombs are going on the same group. That was a waste. But I think it will work out. Two bombers and the T2 tanks over here were able to clear out that force, but not before a mass extractor went down, and we've lost a little bit of build power on the front end. But Ciro looks okay for right now. Chosen should be able to save him with the bombers right here in the middle. Super going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chosen. We have the gun upgrade, I think. Nope, that is an unupgraded commander. That's a bad place to be in because he's versus that T2 comm, superior health, superior build power, much more regen. And Nekulich moving in on Luker, who has entirely T1 units. Let's see. And we do have T2 online, but not mobilizing any Ilshavas for Nekulich. That is starting to look like a little bit of a weak link, and Chosen is making good progress in the center. At least he doesn't have to worry about mercies, although the T1 bombers could potentially become a major issue. No one is fielding air on the north side. We've got two interceptors, three interceptors in total. Wowzers. And these bombers are now going to start coming in, laying down damage on all of the fragile Aeon units in the center. All units pulling to the middle to protect that commander and try to pull everything back. No, it's going directly for the ACU. That is very reckless. That many T1 bombers really doesn't have much of a chance of killing Chosen's commander. I would have gone for the units if that were me because wiping out all of these T... There we go. Looks like they're redirecting, going for the units. They're going to overwhelm the small amount of forces that Super does have, but they're now going to start dying in droves now that the T1 bombers are reprioritized. T2 point defense going down for Nekulich. That's just about the only way to stop the assault from a double gun Aeon commander because that range is just ridiculously overwhelming. Chosen trying to get an air, or not air factory, land factory down in the middle and slip some units past here. Although I don't think he's going to have much luck considering the string of units moving in from Luker, who is now in a position to invade Chosen's base. This is a badly exposed side 
not what you want to be doing ever in a situation like this. Chosen's Commander now coming under direct fire once again. Anti-air turrets going down. That's going to kill off those T1 bombers very, very easily. It's like Super is getting T2 on his commander, which is going to allow him to get some form of defense online. Zero also a little beleaguered. He does have a shield going down, and he's holding his position. I don't think he's going to slip, but there is a triad. There we go. Going down to Viper Spam. The inevitable Cybern Viper Spam that we all know and love. Looks like Luker's commander is coming in directly. He is going to attempt an assault on that build power while he's sending in his T1 forces against Chosen's ACU. Trying to throw down a T2 point defense. I don't think I've ever seen Chosen play this way. He's throwing down T2 point defense in a walled in section. Now granted he can fire fairly well into the choke points on that but I don't know why you would build T2 point defense in a closed off location like that. It just does not seem like a very viable option. Where was that? Right there. Well, I guess so. Okay, okay. I retract that statement because he can actually get maximum range. That center ring is a little bit bigger than I thought it was. All right. That's why you don't second guess people who are much higher ranked than you because occasionally they do actually know what they're doing. Alrighty then. There have been a lot of problems for the North team, but it actually looks like they have overcome them and they're now going to make a little bit of headway. We have a beautiful T2 point events creep for Neklich. He's going to begin pushing Luker back. I'm going to actually bump the speed down just a tick. Ooh, that's nasty business. We've got three missiles loaded, attack launcher going down for super. I'm going to peek at the reclaim numbers just out of curiosity to see what these guys are doing. We've got 7,000 reclaim for super, and it looks like that's going to be 9,000 for zero. Luker with 6,000, chosen with 9,000. 7,000 for Shadow and Nequilich with 7,000. So the north side has a very, very slight reclaim advantage, but the south has an eco advantage. We've got 75 income. That actually looks like a low power T3 air build. That is going to turn nasty. We've got three T2P gens adjacent to the factory. If you don't assist the factory much with that adjacency, you'll be able to build T3 air at a slow pace from that factory. So we may actually see a strap bomber push. I love the Ilshiva trying to work its way up into this, into this expansion to knock that out. But between the point defense and the units moving in, I don't think it's going to have much luck. And holy cow, so much unclaimed reclaim. Why is this a thing? Nekulich is not looking too shabby, though. He's pretty much reestablished himself. He does have as much eco or maybe a little bit more than his opponent, and he definitely has more reclaim. And he is being assisted still by a small amount of units from Chosen. Chosen is looking a little bit rough, though. He's got a lot of pillars assailing his position. It looks like he is going to try to creep up on them for an overcharge. All the more power to them, if, to him if he can succeed. And he's already got a task force out to the right. Trying to knock out these last couple of mass extractors and an engineer there. Kind of an odd mix for Chosen. Shoving units all over the map. I can't say they're not doing any good. But it's just very odd choices. I don't think I've seen this kind of play before. Chosen landing a good overcharge on those. But he is a bit too close. There's a triad there. Is trying to get overcharges on all of the pillars. And it looks like he simply is not going to make it. T1 point defense going down. More pillars moving in. And that's the bad part. There's a shield. That basically eliminates one overcharge from the ACU. Two if you can protect it for long enough. Only T1 units on Chosen's side. More T1 units pouring in from Luker. I think Chosen overextended. This is, if he gets out of this, I'm going to be very impressed. Nice veterancy up to three vet on the comp. 18,000 potential health, 8,000 real, but dropping incredibly fast. And he's walking closer. Why? 
why you do this. Mercy's on super. That's three. That is going to drive the commander back. And we're down to 3,000 health on Chosen's Calm. Only T1 units left. His own Aurora is moving in. We've got Mantis coming in, desperately trying to save that commander from the right side. Ciro doing a beautiful job protecting his teammate. Oh man, that was, that was ridiculously close. Chosen had better get the hell out of Dodge. This commander looks like he's positioning himself for a pickup should Chosen come that direction, but nope, there he is moving back. Whew, buddy, that was close. Chosen did manage to wiggle his way out of it, but look at the cloud of interceptors on this commander along with that shield and anti-air. There's no way, no way in hell mercies are going to work after that. That was the one chance he had to kill that commander with mercies and he failed. Now notice we've got T1 anti-air positioned around every other commander, very well protected and I don't think any of them are going to fall for that trick either. The Ilshaba's numbers are growing. Nekulich doing a good job of getting T2 units on in mass, but this super long range commander is a bit of a problem with those overcharges, knocking out all of those Ilshavas in a matter of seconds. That's why you have to back up from, have to back up from that commander. I mean, that's horrendous when you take those kinds of losses. We have actually got T3 Mexes online for super. He played the delaying game. He has a T3 air factory. I don't see any actual T3 air yet, but he has it in his back pocket as an option. See, this is why you do not let a person go without pressuring them. If you don't pressure them, and here come the tack launches, factories going down. There's no T2 mexes to hit on chosen side, so he's simply eliminating the build power one shot at a time. Not actually a bad strategy. If you do not pressure your opponent, this is what happens. They eco up and then they kill you. And chosen is certainly experiencing that. He's backing up now. He's on reclaim orders with his commander way out front, not paying any attention. There's the move order. He does have overcharges, but he took a couple of thousand damage from those pillars before he even realized what was happening. Running for the hills, Obsidian's moving in from the right. He had one close call, but I don't think he can save himself from this second one. T2 point defense, picking off a couple of units as they move by. Nekulich coming in with his gun comm to try and save him. 4,000, 3,000, and no way. Yeah, no way he's getting out of there. That is the end, but Shadow's looking a little bit rough around the edges down here. He's in the middle of a power stall, which is dropping his shield periodically, taking tons of damage. If Ciro can pull off this kill, they still have a chance. Shield is up. Does he have power? Shadow, let's click on him and see. Oh, crap. The power is up. Now the priority needs to be this T2P gen right here. If they can kill that T2P gen and drop that sh- no, no. Oh, that's- that sucks. Ugh. They almost pulled that other- almost pulled that other comm kill, which would have actually brought the game back relatively even. But as it stands, this is going to be very, very hard to come back from for the North team. There's the T3 scouts out and about. They are- oh, there's the strap bomber. That is exactly what I was afraid of. Looking for targets, scouting them out, and that is going to be game, I think, because I don't see... These guys looked okay. Had it not been for that T3 air, I think they may have been able to salvage this, but when you got a T3 strap bomber running around the map and no good way to counter it, I mean, we've got a total of three interceptors for green and about six for Nekulich, it's just not enough. It's not gonna work. And you do have the anti-air on that ambassador as well. You never thought that would come in handy, but when you're versus such low numbers of interceptors, it can actually help. T2 power going down, mass extractor going down. It's gonna put Nekulich in a bad spot. He is building tactical missile defense, but I don't think it's gonna do him much good. Well, unless these guys have an ace up their sleeve, I don't think they will be able 
to get over this. Honestly, I would build another strap bomber. <laughs> Super is pulling 2k power income. He is building one, but it's putting him in a stall because he's also building this power generator. Kind of needs to do one or the other. But when that second bomber comes online, he should be able to very, very easily pick off a commander should he choose to do so. That strap bomber just laying waste to this base back here. Nequilich, I'm done. Zero, me too. You know what, guys? I don't blame you. Losing Chosen was not pretty, and T3 Air Online with no counter is even uglier. Chosen forgot to eco, so it's lost. I, I don't think so. I don't think that was actually the problem. I think the problem was there was not enough of a focus on pressuring your opponent. The right and the left side did okay. I don't think there would have been a loss any time during Chosen's lifespan if Chosen had not sent those tiny little groups of units to both sides and all around the edges and tried to do stuff with them. However, shunting those units away from his own front allowed White to basically turtle with zero pressure put on him. And that is what ended up killing them in the end. That and if Nekulich had positioned his units just a little bit better so that Chosen's commander had not died. Although, I don't think that would have saved them because by that point, Super was well on his way to T3 Air. So even if Chosen had survived, none of them, none of them had the tech to counter that strat bomber. Basically, at that point, you're down to building mass um, mass T1 anti-air to try to drop it as it circles. And Nekulich diving into the middle of OP Obsidians. In with that commander, he is going to get massacred. It was basically... Remember the Alamo all over again. <laughs> Zero now waiting in waist deep. He does have the advantage of that nuke taking out most of the stuff, but strap bombers are too much for a lone commander. He is going to go down as well. So that is GG all the way around. I realize that that appeared to be somewhat of a one-sided game, and towards the end, it definitely was because of the eco problem. I think rather than trying to get the maximum entertainment out of this, we should look at this as a... Uh, learning experience because this is exactly what you don't do coming from this side you cannot leave someone unopposed because either they're going to redirect all of their units to a different front and crush that side or they're going to take the option that super did and just tech up and tech up until you cannot match their superior firepower and you lose that's all there is to it Alrighty guys, that is going to be it for this game. I hope you had a blast on Blasted Tundra. I hate myself as soon as I open my mouth for that pun. I tried to pull it back, but the first word was already out. You may groan freely, my friends. And <laughs> please send me replays. Please, please send me replays. I do desperately need them. That is going to be it for me. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.